Hi, this is Andre. This is another video looking at integrating audio effects into live looping. Thank you very much to Stephen Clements for commissioning this one. In this video, we're going to look at the Lexicon Vortex, which is a cult classic processor that was made for a short period in the mid-90s. In the most basic sense, the Vortex does pitch modulation and an echo effect, but that's really selling it short because it tends to do very, very strange, warped, bizarre types of effects. The way it's configured is that you have a series of effects here. These are factory presets. If you switch from preset to register, then these are user patches. Each one of these different settings has an A and a B mode. So for instance, if you go to number six in the factory settings, that's mosaic A. If you push the AB button, that switches to mosaic B. When you switch back and forth between A and B settings on the vortex, that's what's known as morphing. And it's a more complex transition than just crossfading between two different effects. A lot of what gives the vortex its particular character has to do with the kinds of things that happen when you're morphing back and forth between patches, whether they're factory presets, as you'd have here, or whether they're user-defined versions of those presets, which is what's going to happen whenever it's set to register. So when you see the red light lit up there, I'm accessing patches that I stored myself over the course of, well, I got my Vortex in 1996. I'm filming this in 2018, so you can imagine how much stuff has been put in there. So different types of sounds are accessed on the right-hand side here. When you come over to the left-hand side, you can edit different parameters of the different sounds. So for instance, if I want to edit the rate on this particular setting, then I go to the value knob after selecting rate there, and I can edit it on a value of 1 to 64. 1 being the minimum, 64 being the maximum. It'll display the value for a short time, and then it will go back to displaying which preset you're at. So I'm not going to speak a whole lot about the Vortex, largely because I can't speak intelligently about it, because I don't pretend to understand its myriad subtleties and inner workings. I will say that it's a really, really inspiring processor. It's great for doing some really unpredictable things. And in the context of the two performances that are in this video, hopefully you're going to get a sense of how that can impact what you're doing with looping. As with the previous effects video, we're going to be looking at two different arrangements. We're going to be looking at having the Vortex before the echoplex, so that anything that's happening in the vortex gets entered into the loop. And we're also going to be looking at having the vortex after the echoplex. That means that the entire echoplex sound is going to be fed through the vortex, and it will process the entire EDP loop as a whole. I made the analogy last time that when you have effects before a looper, it's kind of like painting with different individual colors. And when you have effects after a looper, it's kind of like applying a frame or a filter to the overall picture. Whether or not you're using it before or after your looper, the Vortex definitely has some very unusual and interesting colors in its palette. So, let's see what happens.
So that's a crash course in the lexicon vortex being used both before and after a looper. Thank you again very much to Stephen Clements for commissioning this video, and thank you very much for tuning in and checking it out. There will be more along the lines of working with effects processing and more along the lines of different looping functions and possibilities in general just down the road. So as always, thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.